Hello guys and welcome to Cable... Cable? Kerbal Space Simulator. Uh, or Space Program I should say. KSP. Um, now what this is, this is a game that's been in development for a while. There's continuous updates and things like that. But I've been playing it in my spare time quite a bit. And I just wanted to show you what I've been getting up to. Uh, so I've obviously been to Juna, as you can see, over there. Um, and I've been to the moon and Minimus. Now I can't remember what I've done here, so I'm going to show you, because it's been a couple of weeks since I've played, because um, when you get... Okay. No? Yes? Loaded? Okay, that's loaded. So, this is my moon base. Um, it's only a small base, there's only three Kerbinauts. These guys have currently no way of getting back home. Um, they do, however, have a way of replenishing fuel and they've got all the power they need, so they're quite happy. I'm assuming power means they've got enough life support. Uh, now, this is a really good example of a mission that went a bit wrong. If you look at the landing struts, um, I think this is the one. Oh no, this, yeah, if you look at the wheels here, can you see that wheel uh, is not centered? This is the center line here. and one is here and one is much far further out, which meant uh, is this one that's wrong, it should be out further which meant when it came to docking this it was really really difficult so I had to spend about half an hour trying to maneuver it in place and it's bits like that that make this game so great because you can um, you can spend all the time you like designing it and making sure everything's perfect or at least what you think is going to be perfect and then you'll finally get down here and find out something's quite wrong but then you get to spend like 20 minutes figuring out exactly how you're going to correct it uh, and I'm currently landed in this massive crater on the moon um, it's just such an epically beautiful game um, I can't stress how fun it is as well it's, you get such a massive sense of achievement as well so this is one of my small moon bases I did this just because I thought I ought to have something on the moon because going to uh, other planets and stuff is, is like child's play after you've played this game for quite a long time uh, so if I go back to the space centre so yeah, back at the space centre, I'm um, going to show you um, my Minmus base now. Uh, what's this here? A uh, land at Juna Probe. So it's probably where I went to the to the Juna and then came back. Now this is going to lag out a little bit, so I'm going to click on this and it's going to take ages to, la uh, to load. Uh, three, two, one. Okay, welcome to my Minmus base. Now. Here we go, it's just loading. This is quite a large setup. And there's debris everywhere. Okay, so let me talk you through what what this is. Um, sorry, it is really laggy. I'm getting like seven frames a second. Um, which isn't which is not ideal here. So this big green structure here, this uh, this one with the two pipey things in the middle. You can hear the music's even lagging a little bit. How terrible is that? Um, in fact, let me just turn that music off because it's a bit distracting. Uh, settings. Music. What a shame. It's only because I've got so many different things going on here that it's struggling. So, uh, this here is basically my converter and all this is doing is converting um, it converts liquid fuel, uh, ketane, I think it's c pronounced, into the various different fuels. So that's quite cool. This big orange one just holds fuel and lots of it. Uh, the idea being I can use this as a fueling base later on because Minmus isn't a bad place to go and have a, well, I don't believe it's a bad place to actually have a refueling center. Um, gravity here is pretty much non existent. So once you get here, um, it's pretty pretty easy to refuel and then use it as a launch base. Uh, this thing in the middle with all the solar panels, uh, that's my power center. So um, you can see it's got loads of batteries, loads of these big powers, uh, power uh, blah, 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 solar panels, and it's also got loads and loads of um, a radio radio something or others that they're these little um, little little doohickeys here and they just produce a tiny little bit of power but I've got so many on here that it's not too bad um, and they're all linked together I don't know if you can definitely see this they're linked together by these little lines 
Now that's a mod um, that allows you to link up different spaceships and they act as if they act like docking ports so once it's docked you can pretty much do anything you like in terms of moving fuel around and that's why all these are filled up because I've managed to mine everything and uh, refuel my ships of which I now have two. I've got one big mining station over here now this thing over here is a beast and we'll just mine uh, ketane like there's no tomorrow uh, and this one over here is the buggy that will take uh, Jebediah, um, who was leading the mission, and his two uh, co-habitees, Genyard and Fredstead. Uh, and when they're ready, they will be able to go home um, in a fu fully fueled ship, um, which they currently can't do because I've just noticed that there's no solar panels or uh, there's no way of getting through the atmosphere in one way. Um, so what I'll have to do is come back with some sort of machine and dock dock with them. Now what you'll see on the floor is a lot of these radio um, radioactive power things and over there in the distance you'll see loads of different uh, debris and stuff. So things do go wrong. Um, I make the best of a bad situation so uh, I haven't reloaded um, you know when things go wrong like that and a few bits get knocked off I think it adds flavor to the game when things don't quite quite uh, things don't go quite as well as you planned so you can kind of play around now I chose this area specifically on Minmus because it's actually a frozen lake or not a frozen lake but an old lake bed maybe I mean it's perfectly flat so it looks like once upon a time maybe these were lakes uh, which makes it ideal for a nice flat docking area uh, what is that over there Minimus Kitten. It's probably uh, one of the launchers for uh, one of these uh, one of these areas I've got. So that's that done and now I'm going to go back to the Space Center and show you my last bit that I've done. Okay and all we're going to look for here is uh, the Juna lander. So yeah, uh, welcome back. This is Juna. Um, this is something that didn't go quite as planned. Now, this happened a while ago, and what happened was, was that I sent a, <laughs> I sent this thing um, to come and to visit uh, Juna and basically land and take samples and mine key thing. Uh, the fact of the matter is, this small arm could not reach past the landing struts that I used, um, and then it ran out of power, so there was just nothing I could do to salvage it, and unfortunately I did have a Kerman. Uh, I don't know where he would have sat. I think he, there might be another pod missing somewhere, on top of this maybe. Um, there it is over there, uh, where the Kerbal was, and so I had to send a rescue ship. Now, hopefully we can get to the rescue ship. Oh. Flying through the earth, uh, cycling through the debris here. Here we go. So then I sent this thing down to rescue them, uh, and I had a problem here as well. So if I deploy the drill, does it deploy correctly? I couldn't remember if it worked or not. Now I don't think that's working. Um, Because again, it's just a little bit too high. Uh, in fact, if I quick save here, I believe it's F8, uh, F9 maybe, F9. Oh no, that's quick load. F5, quick save. If I lower this landing strut, you might see sparks where this gets lowered in. Ready? There we go. So it's just a little bit too high. Um, that's actually working quite well. Well, unless that's separated, which I think it probably has done. Let's have a look. Oh no, it's still okay. Whoop. Okay. Um, so yeah, that, 
there was something wrong with this one as well. That's right, I remember now. So that, that wasn't the issue. But if you look at the land drive used right on the top, um, it's a one-man pod. This has one crew, a maximum number of one person can sit in there. So this guy came all the way from Earth, landed in this massive, awesome spaceship, and then couldn't, couldn't do anything. He couldn't rescue the other Kerbal. They kind of switched, um, and I had to send another rescue mission that had enough room for three Kerbals to take them all back to Earth. So that was quite funny. Um, but it's just another example of how you think this game um, you kind of you kind of set a mission in your head and things just spiral out of control where you've done something wrong and you have to correct it and it's so easy to just you know reload if you I, I like to quick save and reload obviously um, but I think sometimes it's too easy and figuring out a way to save a Kerbal is actually a hell of a lot more fun and figuring out a way to make your dysfunctional objects work in a way that maybe they weren't perfectly designed to work in is actually quite rewarding and I really enjoy the process of trial and error and figuring out exactly you know how, how it should work and you know I can't state how beautiful this game is I mean oh it's just a glorious game uh, people think uh, might think it's a little bit slow but I'm gonna show you that it's not in the next episode so thanks for watching this little uh, introduction to my uh, to my little universe here and hopefully you'll watch the next one where I'll probably set off on a mission to go somewhere else. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.